good morning students so in the previous class we have seen the levels of organization today we have to start with tissues okay so first we will start with the plant tissue and after completing the plant tissue we will start with the animal tissues so plant tissues on the basis of the lifelong cell division there are two types of plant tissue so plant tissue is categorized into two categories on the basis of the capability of the cell to divide lifelong so one type of plant tissue is meristematic tissue and the other type of plant tissue is permanent tissue and what is the basis for their division that is lifelong capability of the cell to divide so on that basis the plant tissue is divided into two categories that is meristematic tissue and permanent tissue so meristematic tissue cells are capable to divide lifelong whereas the permanent tissue cells loses the capacity to divide once a permanent tissue is formed so permanent tissue cells will lose the capacity to divide once a permanent specific tissue is formed okay then meristematic tissue is found at the growing tips of the plant whereas the permanent tissue is found at other parts of the plant except the growing tips okay then meristematic tissue helps in the growth and development of the plant whereas the permanent tissue helps in protection support and conduction of food water and mineral in the plant so this is the basic difference between the meristematic tissue and permanent tissue on the basis of cells capability to divide lifelong on the basis of their location and on the basis of their function so now we have to see that why meristematic cells are capable to divide lifelong so the first reason is what the meristematic cells are small in size so when the meristematic cells are small in size it's, it can easily divide if i'll give you a matchstick and i will give you a tree trunk which one you will be able to divide easily obviously matchstick because it is a smaller in size okay then the meristematic cells are cubical so when the meristematic cells are cubical it can be divided through any plane okay so that is why this feature makes the cell to divide lifelong then the cell wall is thin again the same example we can take that a thin match stick and a thick log of the tree which one you will be able to divide easily a thin match stick so when the cell wall is thin the cells capability to divide lifelong becomes easy okay then large nucleus in the previous chapter cells chapter you have studied that nucleus helps in the process of cell division so if the cell uh, nucleus is large the process of cell division will be easy then vacuoles are absent in the previous chapter also you have seen that number of vacuoles in plant cell or animal cell sorry in animal cell depends on what the age of the cell so if the age of the cell is very less there will be no vacuole in case of animal cell so when the vacuoles is absent it means it will not be able to adjust or accommodate the extra substances formed by the metabolic activity so that is why one option is only left that is cell division no ics no ics it stands for intercellular space ics it stands for inter cellular space so inter it means in between in between the two cells there is no space so if you are sitting in a classroom and uh, by any uh, due to any uh, reason two uh, sections are merged together so when two sections are merged together the number of students will be very high so that is why what we do we divide the number of students into two different sections 
so no intercellular space is there so again this reason will make the meristematic cells to divide lifelong so these are the basic characteristics of the meristematic cell which helps them to divide lifelong okay so sometimes in reasoning based question it may be asked that why meristematic cells are capable to divide lifelong or mention any two characteristic feature of the meristematic cells which helps them to divide lifelong okay this is all for today in the next class we will start with the types of meristematic tissue thank you